it's not enough to say that Pakistan and India love the game of cricket. India, India, India. Pakistan is the most mercurial, yes! unpredictable team in the world. It's not enough to say it takes on almost religious proportions across both countries. In India, cricket is not a game, it is a religion. And we are so religious that we will get the World Cup home. Cricket in India and Pakistan is a way of life. An obsession that crosses boundaries of culture, class, creed and religion. It dominates public life and influences politics. When India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi won re-election last month, one of his most high-profile congratulations came from India's cricket captain, Virat Kohli. Well, Pakistan's current Prime Minister is arguably their greatest ever cricketer, Imran Khan, a man who cast off his career as a cricketing playboy to become the leader of a nuclear weaponized nation that he is today. Imran Khan, the great Pakistan all-rounder, has combined with Anil Dalpat. Glorious trope there from Imran Khan. The nation's fortunes rise and fall on the results of a single match. To say this is the biggest game at this year's Cricket World Cup does it little justice. This will be one of the biggest sporting moments of the year. People are very much excited and they are looking at tickets, but unfortunately they could not find it. And you will both place in very high level pressure. What do you say on that, please? Last time they played in the World Cup, more than one billion people watched. That's as many as the FIFA World Cup final last year, or almost 10 times the amount of people that watched the Super Bowl in the United States. But this isn't about sheer numbers. Instead, like so much in the sporting world, the rivalry begins and is forever influenced by politics. The fans are so crazy and they want to win too against Pakistan, so a so little bit extra pressure comes on when you play against the Pakistan and you have to prove uh, uh, that you are the better side. Got a big shout out to the Pakistan team, India will come in! All over the world, wherever Indian Pakistan living, they get involved. I think that's a big thing. All the cricketers, I'm sure, from both the sides feel that as soon as you start playing the game, it eventually is a game of bat and ball, and you know that's what you need to focus on. My answer also the same. I think <laughs> no different. If we go way back to the 19th century, cricket, a British game, was used as a tool of colonization. The world may be small, but it's not snowing everywhere. So give me Karachi, where the Australian cricket tourists are playing the Sin team. From Manchester to Mumbai, London to Lahore, the sun never set on the British Empire or on the cricket playing world. But when the partition of British India in 1947 split the region in two, the gentlemanly atmosphere of cricket on the Asian continent went with it. By 1965, off the pitch, the two countries were at war. And again, in 1971. Cricket, the one thing they had in common, wasn't played again between the two countries until 1978. In the decades since, most matches have been played in neutral venues. Sharjah and Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, and even as far afield as Toronto in Canada. But as fate would have it, the ICC always seems to pick them out against each other in major competitions. They follow each other around the competition, just waiting to cut the other down to size. India won their first World Cup in 1983, when the great Kapil Dev guided them to victory. Pakistan wasn't far behind, catapulted by Imran Khan's captaincy and the incredible talent of a truly golden generation in 1992. And since then, the world has watched on as the two fight it out in World Cups across the game's three formats. But in Cricket World Cups, when they play each other, India have won six, Pakistan zero. Cricket hasn't always torn the two nations apart. It's also been used to bring peace. Through the 1990s and early 2000s, there was relative calm between the two nations for an extended period. Cricket became once again a tool for diplomacy. Until cricket began to change. For a game that relied on tradition and antiquity, Money began to flow in like never before. The most shining example of this was the Indian Premier League. Cricket's financial revolution saw India effectively control the purse strings and the future of the game. Everyone was about to make a lot of money. 
But after just one season of IPL action with Pakistani players, politics once again reared its head. Indian Premier League chairperson Rajiv Shukla has made it clear that there is no possibility of bilateral cricket ties between India and Pakistan unless they get the government's approval. The Mumbai attacks of 2008, which India squarely blamed Pakistan for, saw a split which over 10 years on is yet to be repaired. Pakistani players do not play in the T20 domestic showpiece of the IPL, a tournament which brings together the best players has shut out its nearest neighbour. Now the IPL isn't even shown in Pakistan. So here we are, we've reached 2019, but do you think anything looks like it's about to change? Pakistan says it has shot down two Indian aircraft which it claims were over Pakistani airspace. Calls for revenge across India. We demand that one life is avenged with 100,000 lives in Pakistan. Security forces in Indian administered Kashmir opened fire on villagers trying to stop the arrest of suspected armed separatists. Not a chance. This match at the World Cup almost didn't happen. Should India boycott Pakistan at the World Cup, no matter what the cost is. Kashmir, the region that the two have been fighting for over 50 years, once again flared up. Politics, once again, dragging sport into the middle of its squabbles, putting at risk this match, this World Cup, and what might be described as a marketeer's dream. As it stands today, the match will be played in front of a packed house at Old Trafford in Manchester, a city that is home to both large Indian and Pakistani communities. Tickets are going for well over $1,000 each as the black market flourishes for a match that could have sold out 10 times over. For the players, the eyes of the world are watching. The pressure of more than half a century of history is on the shoulders of these 22 men. And while they'll try to say it's only a game, one slip, one lapse in concentration, and you'll only ever be remembered for one thing.